Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. John 14, 1. And good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm Don. And I just thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace upon us. I thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. I ask, Lord God, that you would show us where our confidence needs to be put in. Who our confidence needs to be put in. I thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Hey, I declare life over you. I declare health over you. I declare confidence over you. Reach out and take it. Glory. <laughs> Come into agreement with the word of God. Let not your heart be troubled. And this morning, I was on the trail. And I asked the Lord for a word. And he said, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Let's not be afraid. Let's put our confidence in the Lord. And this morning, my word is about confidence. It's about putting confidence in the Lord when we don't have any confidence. We shouldn't have any confidence in ourselves. Our confidence should absolutely be in Jesus. And I'll let the Holy Spirit uh, relay that message to you. But I want to share a story about my own situation here. And it's my financial situation because I have not been the best steward of what I've been given. I have not. And uh, the Lord knows where I'm at on this. And uh, we're not... We're not behind on our bills. We're not floundering in any way. But I could be so much further ahead. Um, we could be doing some so much more had I had I been a better steward with this stuff. And I'm and my prayer lately has been help me get out of debt, Lord. Help me overcome this thing. And uh, there there's been times where I haven't been so good. <laughs> good at that, but it's not going to be in my strength, it's going to be in Jesus' strength, but this morning I was wrestling with that, and the Lord was saying, have confidence in what I can do, my son, let not your heart be troubled, and so we, when we're in a place of struggle and we're wrestling, we need to begin to apply confidence to the situation that God is our confidence, and the definition of confidence is a relationship a relation of trust or intimacy. And we have to have confidence in God. We have to be intimate with God. He has to be able to access every part of our being. If he, if he, if we don't allow Him to access every part of our being, where's our trust at? Where's our confidence? Who are we placing this in? And we have to put our confidence in Jesus and His ability and what He can do through us. We can't hold on and say, it's in my ability. Because then it's not by His grace, it's by your strength. And then you get to boast about it. We can't boast in God if we're doing it under our own power. And uh, I just want the Holy Spirit right now, I'm just going to release over you the ability to see this in a spiritual in a spiritual light in Jesus' name. Glory to God. That our confidence needs to be in Him and not what we can do. Glory to God. And uh, in Proverbs 3.26, it says, For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Now, me and my financial situation, I really want to get out from under it because there is a bondage that goes with being in debt. And that means that every month I have to faithfully give this amount of money to, my, to, to the people that I owe money to. And I'm not complaining about it. But it, it worries me from time to time, the things that I've done. You know, what if I lose my job? What if this? What if that? You know? <laughs> and, and so, praise the Lord. He is my confidence. I'm confident that, that I'm going to go through this. And I'm going to become stronger and a better steward. But if I look at my situation on a whole and see the, con the economy today and this, that, and the other thing, and watch those propaganda channels and start coming into agreement with them, I'm going to be living in a lot of fear. And God doesn't want me in fear. His, his word says, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a peace, power, love, and a sound mind. And if we're living in fear, we're not living in confidence. Who are you placing your confidence in? You, your situation, the world. You got tons of cash stashed in the IRAs and, and, and you've lost money and stuff. Is your confidence in that? Or is your confidence in God, 
and you know that he's going to take you through every situation. And, and here's something for you guys. Think about this. Okay, this is a revelation that's been coming to me from somebody else. And, and I kind of knew it. And, and I've been saying it because my dogs, when they take them for a walk, they chisel me. One dog's a hammer, the other's a chisel. And God's using them to shape and mold me. But I didn't uh, look at it as a whole picture. The whole picture is everything that we go through. God's deemed us worthy to be conformed in the image of Christ and that we go through these things and as we overcome them from glory to glory we become more like Christ so if you're going through a situation whatever it is begin to say thank you God you've made me worthy to go through this and I know that sounds contrary to our thinking but this is a spiritual battle we're going through and if we can see that God's taking us and chiseling us and molding and shaping us in whatever situation we're in, our hearts won't be troubled and our confidence will be high in the Lord. <laughs> I mean, think about that for a second. Let, let the Holy Spirit put that into you, shape that into you. The uh, Lord told me one time, many I will have many trials, but I'll overcome them all. And at the time... I didn't see the significance of that word, but as I go along, I begin to see more and more about the significance because it's not me that's overcoming them because Jesus already overcame them. And he has given me the strength and the grace to overcome them. So we have to have confidence in the Lord. Praise the Lord. And in 2 Timothy 1, 7, 1, 7 it says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and self-control. Well, that self-control part <laughs> has pretty much eluded me my whole life. But I'm starting to grasp it. I'm starting to apply it to my life because of the strength that Jesus is pouring in me. Not because of my own confidence in myself, because if I do it myself, I'm going to mess up. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to jump off a bridge. <laughs> That's metaphorically speaking. I'm not going to commit suicide. But, but if I put my confidence where my confidence needs to be, I can make a plan of action and go through these things and overcome them with the help of God, with the confidence of God. Because when I live in fear, I'm not putting my confidence in God. I'm putting it in myself, my cir circumstances. And, and I'm seeing that I and myself don't have the capabilities or the abilities and I see that the world is going to hell in a handbasket <laughs> and so you know my con when my confidence see looks on those things I lose confidence I get in fear but if I look to God I can say like David said how dare the, the uncircumcised Philistines stand against the armies of the living God Glory to God. So we need to speak to our situations and say, yeah, I've got confidence in God. How dare you uncircumcised Philistine attempt to stand against the armies of the living God? Because that which God does and that which God speaks will come to pass. And we have to have that confidence in Him. And in Psalms 27, 3, it says, Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, Yet I will be confident. This is about being confident in God. This ain't about being confident in ourselves. Because the second we, be, we begin to look at ourselves and our situation and the storm going on around us, like Peter, we begin to sink under the waves. <laughs> Glory to God. I thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. And if we look, if we keep our eyes fixed and focused on the Lord, we're going to see that His resources, His backing surrounds us. He, he desires to back us up. We just have to invite Him into our realm. Thank you, Pastor. A <laughs> pastor taught a, a message on Sunday about bringing, inviting God into our realm so He can work on our behalf. 
We need to invite him into our situations. We need to speak to him of our situations. We need to look at our situations and laugh. <laughs> because God is our confidence. We can laugh. God sits in the heavens and laughs at the evil plans of the enemy. Because he knows what his plans are. He has confidence in himself. We should have confidence in him. And I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. And I just want to bless your day. I just thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for this time that we came together. I thank you for this word. I just pray, Lord God, that it will build them up. And that they'll apply it to their lives. And I thank you, Lord, for now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, glory to God. I'm going to warm my hands up. <laughs> Drink a little tea. I'm just practicing this song. Be nice by the words up in front of me. Be washed in the blood of the Savior. Be whiter, much whiter than the snow. Well, I don't know the rest of the words, so praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning. Praise the name of the Lord. I should have put the words up in front of me, but then I have to I have to stumble over myself many times to get to get just that far. And I praise the Lord for it. But the Lord did give me a song here the other day. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to play it right now since I'm just not warmed up, but here we go. <laughs> him and what he's got for you and know that confidence is in him not yourself not your circumstances not the money you have saved up in the bank not in your retirement not in your job not in anyone or anything or any situation but in him your confidence in Him and watch what He will do. Watch what your God will do. Don't look at your circumstances and say, Woe is me. Look at your circumstances and say, Praise the Lord. God is my confidence, He's my Redeemer. Because he overcame for you and I. I don't 
know it is proper English anymore. See you later, my brothers and sisters. Bye.